Welcome to another edition of ESI Africa Insights. Today we have the pleasure of speaking with Sarah Mom, who is the Executive Director of Gogler. Welcome, um, Sarah. Um, to start off with, um, just tell us a bit about uh, Gogler. Um, you know, what it stands for, what it does, and where it's at in its current trajectory. <laughs> Absolutely. Let me start by saying I am excited to be at the Inlet Conference. It's one of my favorite conferences. I think I've been here five years in a row at least. Um, Glogla is the off grid, is the Global Off Grid Association, um, and it represents about 200 companies and investors who make, buy, and sell off grid solar products and services. Our role as a global association is really two things. One is we advocate for the sector. Uh, we work for our members and our companies to ensure that uh, there is good representation of the off-grid industry overall. But we also inform the sector. Global houses all the data for the off-grid sector, the data that the International Energy Association uses and others. So we are the source of data we are the source of many of the reports. We do the standards and consumer protection codes for companies. We also work in policy and regulation, working very closely with national governments around the policy and regulations like import duties and VATs that really impact the ability for companies to operate successfully. And then we convene the sector. We do a lot of convening and working groups and working very closely with our members. Hey, fantastic. It's quite extensive. Yes. Um, so tell me, how are off-grid solar products helping to mitigate the effects of climate change in Africa? So if we, if we kind of pull back the lens for a moment and look at the movement of many countries trying to move towards a uh, greener future, um, greener energy future. Um, solar just overall fits into that. It's a cleaner source. Um, but when you look specifically into off-grid solar, you see some very specific effects. One is for vulnerable populations. So for populations that are living with first-time energy access, these early tier products like a solar home system, it increases um, their uh, access to information, um, which also provides them information around um, droughts and severe weather. Um, when you look at things like farmers, who uh, about 37% of crops in Africa are perished between harvest and distribution because of a lack of refrigeration. So off-grid products can provide solar refrigeration, for example. And then let's look at um, health and education. So preparing the next generation in terms of um, healthier livelihoods, um, better education, and then CO2 emissions, certainly. But I think the most important thing to look at is when you're looking at first time or um, lower tiers of energy access, setting people on a path that is not dependent on fossil fuels, that is a cleaner, more forward-looking uh, resilient product. So it also helps resiliency in terms of um, areas of famine, um, scarce water resources. So when you look at agriculture, a, so a solar water pump can increase yields by about 5%. Um, and then there is actually um, some move to incorporate AI and other um, tools to actually do weather prediction. And so having access to a phone or radio or television can help farmers start to plan. And there is um, some forward-looking technologies that are helping getting farmers that information so that they can plant their crops um, on better cycles. Just in terms of communication then with, say, the agriculture sector, uh, would Google uh, typically engage in communication strategies uh, around communicating with governments or how, how does that um, process um, um, work. Do you mean in terms of like telecommunications? Yeah. So I'll give you an example. We, one of our, our, our members and our, our good friends is a GSMA. So they represent, you know, the big telco, yes. the towers and the whole thing. So yeah. as a national government is thinking about putting down its telecommunication, its data lines, um, 
We also look at how that is um, coupled with energy access. So um, access to a phone is related to access to data and is related to where tower placements go in. And as we start to plan sort of the whole ecosystem of, of communication, it really starts in the home with having the ability to charge a phone and to use that phone yeah. and then to move up into using other products that rely on um, energy as the source. Um, so that kind of coordination is really important. A second one is in bundling products or in the payment systems that we use in how particularly lower income consumers are paying for products. So there's a lot of coordination um, with our colleagues in the mobile industry, for example, in um, PAYGO models, pay as you go for usage, credit risk management, and even around consumer protection. So if you've never had a phone before, this might be the first time you've ever signed an official contract. And um, we have a shared interest in making sure that the consumer understands what the terms are, understands what the payment is, understands how to use and care for the product. So there's a lot of shared interest in relationship between the two. Yeah, interesting. Um, just to kind of shift tempo a bit, in terms of financing energy access in Africa, um, what is the off-grid sector doing to help um, bridge that gap, say with regards to um, last mile connectivity? So uh, I'll throw out a quick data point. In 2024, investment in the off-grid solar industry dipped by about 30%. Um, so we need, um, you know, the numbers are different, but for first time energy access, about seven, seven times more investment than we currently have. Um, so we're doing a couple of things. Um, a, a concessional capital mm. is what people are seeking. Commercial capital is too expensive. So for companies to go out on the commercial market, the cost of capital is just too high. Yeah. So we work with um, uh, the MDBs, the, you know, the big banks, the World Bank and others. We work with philanthropies. We work with partners to look at financial instruments to help de-risk. So there's kind of the inputs of how these concessional um, financing is developed. And then we look at how does the consumer, what can the consumer afford? So about 78% of people who are seeking first-time energy access, well, first, they have about $5 a month to spend on, yeah. on, on energy. Yeah. So how do we use subsidies through national governments and through other instruments to lower the cost to the consumer? Because at the end of the day, you cannot sell energy, you cannot sell products, to consumers if they can't afford them. So we've got to match the need of what the industry needs to um, be a sustainable business and to scale and to meet energy access goals. And we have to match that up with affordability and the um, populations that need to be served. And I think we all know the statistics about 600 million yes. in Sub-Saharan Africa. And you know, of those, these are, these are not consumers that have a lot of money to spare to spend on energy access. So it was a partnership with uh, the broader donor communities, but most importantly with national governments. I mean, national governments sit at the seat of driving so much of the policy, um, the financing that um, provides subsidies to allow companies to reach the last mile, the hardest to reach populations. Yeah. And I just want to add to that, that um, you know, we look at a lot of the, the bigger companies and there is a lot of consolidation in the off-grid mm -hmm. sector. Um, but the distributors, I mean, these are people who live in the community and they know, uh, they know the customer. And so it's very important that we have a feedback loop um, and we support the um, the distributors who are out and actually reaching and working with mm. the consumer. So just to conclude on that, it needs everything from equity 
to more catalytic financing, concessional de-risking, but also subsidies and grants, absolutely, to really close that affordability gap. Um, because if the goal is to get electricity to the people who don't have it, to not only improve lives, but to make real economic transformation in the long term, uh, we've got to use all the tools in the toolbox to make sure that we can do that. And that's that's equity, that's debt, that's more catalytic financing, subsidies, grants. It's the mix of all of this that has to come together and why it makes it so complicated. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your insights, um, Sarah. And thank you for joining us um, on ESI Africa Insights. Until next time, have a powerful day.